Hello and welcome to another episode of CN Live. I'm Colin Noir, and our first guest is a former Navy SEAL who has gone on in television and book writing. It's Cade Courtley. Did I, did I pronounce your last name right, Courtley? Perfect. Ah, great. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm on a winning streak here. I usually butcher people's names, so I guess I'm doing pretty good <laughs> so far this week. So um, let's jump right into it. Uh, how did you, at what point did you decide that you wanted to get into the military? Uh, so I was one of these kids who was a late bloomer. Mm -hmm. So I was skinnier, shorter, slower. And uh, in the town I grew up in, <clears throat> that didn't work out too well. I ended up getting beaten up a lot. And at the time, it's kind of tough for a kid, but that was sort of the beginning of my basic training. Because really? I was like, "All right, <laughs> if you're gonna uh, if you're gonna make it in this world, <clears throat> uh, you're gonna have to toughen up." Yeah. And, and in addition to that toughening up, I had a hell of a chip on my shoulder. So I said to myself, "All right." Uh, what's the toughest thing out there? I knew I wanted to be in the military. My grandfather, he was in the Army Air Corps, and uh, I knew it was either gonna, I was gonna go to prison, or I was gonna go into the military. Mm -hmm. I figured hanging the right turn would probably be a better, <laughs> better thing for me. So uh, I started looking into it, and uh, I saw that movie Top Gun. I was like, oh yeah, man, I'm Tom Cruise. <laughs> I'm gonna be a fighter pilot, right? Um, unfortunately, or I should say fortunately, uh, I was involved in an altercation during spring break and I was blinded in my right eye for a couple of days. Uh, I was fortunate enough that uh, my eyesight came back, mm -hmm. but it didn't come back good enough to be a front seat pilot in the, uh, in the, in the Navy. So what? Which was a blessing in disguise because... <laughs> I, I, well, you know, it, it's just weird how things work, man. Yeah. I found out about the SEAL teams, and it fit like a glove, and it was that thing that that chip on my shoulder I've been carrying around for a decade. It's like, all right, let's see what you got, buddy, because uh, this is about as tough as it gets, and that's, yeah. that's how I got in the SEAL teams. It's weird. You, you, you said that you were a late bloomer and that you got picked on a lot, but what's interesting is kind of your mindset – at a, at a time where I guess physically you were seen as weak because that mindset to me is something that's actually kind of, kind of strong. It, it, you'll just kind of have that forethought to challenge yourself and throw yourself and throw yourself into something that was incredibly challenging and willing to test yourself. Um, so would, would, would you say your, your inadequacies, so to speak, were when you were younger more or limited to your physical capability? Cause it didn't sound like to me mentally you were weak. Uh, well, you know, I would say that uh, the challenges that people experience in life, um, you can do one of two things when you are confronted with a challenge. You can sort of quit and just give in and be like, I've been beaten, or you can attack it and you can overcome it. And um, I guess I was lucky enough that I had the tenacity to say, no, I, you know, I don't care if you're twice my size, you're not going to get me. You might get me this time. You might get me the next time. But you know what? I'm going to find you in that alley, <laughs> and we're going to make it right. So that kind of a uh, mindset was exactly what you needed or ex exactly what got me through something like six nights of hell week where you're hypothermic, haven't slept more than about 20 minutes in the week. I mean – did you say that 20 minutes in a week? Drive. Well, yeah. Yeah, you, you go for six days with a total of 45 minutes of sleep. So for any of you folks out there that want to hallucinate for free, <laughs> check out Hell Week. <laughs> do, you rem do you remember yeah. any of your hallucinations? Were they very vivid? or? Yeah, I do. I do. It's a, it's a trip. So... Uh, it usually happens at night because during daytime you've got illumination and gotcha. enough that's going on that's kind of kind of keeps me like that. But nighttime we did this thing called Around the World. So if you're familiar with Coronado Island outside of San Diego, 
they made us thing do this thing called around the world where you have to paddle these 250 pound, uh, pound inflatable rafts around the whole island 20 22 miles and so here's the deal when you're just wiped out it's just this monotonous rowing so the funny thing about hallucinations about day three is nobody seems to have them at the same time so it's <laughs> Pure comedy. <laughs> My buddy, swore to God, he, he started singing Elvis. And then I, I, I swore to God that there were seven, there were three 747s that had crashed in the Bay of LA or the Bay of San Diego. I'm like, we got to go help them out. And so everybody else is getting pure pleasure out of this. Why well, I am convinced <laughs> that this tragic event is happening. You know, it's, it, it, it it's just part of it, man. It's just when you take things and you really push it to that kind of edge, yeah. your brain every once in a while just sort of like shorts out. Yeah. Now, it, it, I, I read I read up a little bit about you, and it says that you broke your leg three times and fractured your skull during Navy SEAL training. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's the toughest military training in the world for a reason because the products – and, and I mean, historically, even just in the last decade, you can see what these guys have done. And it's been absolute excellence. If you need something done right, call call the teams. Yeah. They'll do it. They'll do it right. They'll take care of it. And, uh, and we're proud of that. And uh, But it's tough for a reason, man. Yeah, I, uh, I broke my leg the first hell week. I had to go back to the beginning. <laughs> broke my leg the second hell week had to go back to the beginning we were doing this thing called surf passage where it just happened to be one of these days in san diego where the surf was huge uh -huh. so of course the uh, instructors were like yeah let's get them out there in that and it was like being in a freaking blender man <laughs> and uh something happened uh, one of the boats that was a safety boat, uh -huh. they weren't looking. They got inside the surf zone, and a uh, Boston whaler hit me right in the right temple. And uh, I got—I mean, I got to be honest with you, man. Um, like half an inch further that way, uh -huh. and if the water wasn't so cold, we're not chatting right now, man. I'm, really? I'm in a hole. Wow. Yeah, but. Everything happens for a reason, man. Yeah, man, Jesus. <laughs> so, because uh, wow, I mean, I can swim, and I know a lot of people out there don't believe me. Um, but you know, <laughs> that sucks. I mean, come on, what, what, <laughs> what kind of what kind of crappy stereotype is that? <laughs> you and I are gonna go swimming. Right. Now, granted, granted, I haven't gone swimming in years, but I do know I do know how to swim. Um, but you know, there's this. I'm not the biggest fan of swimming in massive bodies of water, and um, you know, there was there was someone who told me, you know, like the whole idea of like like when you get taken out into sea, so to speak. Like if you, you one minute you're swimming, next minute you know you're caught up in a current and you're out to sea. Um, you know, there's so many things about the water that's that. I realize is kind of counterintuitive to what you would think to do. You know, the, the, the whole notion of if, if you are drowning, panicking is probably going to make it worse, clearly. Um, and, you know, sure. preserving energy. Like, you don't realize how much energy you expend when you're swimming. Um, at least I didn't. And then someone telling me, you know, if you did to get taken out into sea, like, to, I think, run parallel to the, to the shore. Am I, am I wrong? Or is that, is that right or wrong? Well, I mean, here's the interesting thing. Um, I, I've swam in some huge surf. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the, the kind of stuff that crushes cars. <laughs> and you talked about it being counterintuitive. You know the safest place in 30-foot waves? Where? Is under them. You just go under. It's <laughs> smooth as could be under there. All that action's happening on, on top. top. Uh... So you just go down. You just grab some sand. Let it pass. Look for a spot to grab some grab some air, and keep going. I mean, it's a trip. It's almost literally you've got a hurricane above you, but it is so serene underneath it. It's a trip. That, it's a hell of a view too. I, <laughs> I, I, I don't think I, I would you, describe you it as such. That, 
you said counterintuitive yeah. and it really is but if you're underneath it uh-huh. it's smooth as could be are we, are we, it's crazy are we talking like being in an eye of a storm essentially well i you know i don't know if you want to hang out there too yeah, long, that's what I was like. but <laughs> Let's just say you're uh, you're on the beach and you're trying to get outside of the breaker zone. Yeah, you just it's just like surfers do; they duck dive underneath it. But if you don't have a board that's full of buoyancy, it's even easier. Throw on a pair of fins and you just get under it. Take your breath. Get under it. Before you know, it, you're outside the breaker zone. And you're like, wow. All right, what's breaker zone? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna expose my ignorance. I don't know what breaker zone is. Well, breaker zone is that section between the beach where all those waves are crashing. Okay. And there's a point where you get beyond that. Oh, okay. Okay. That point between their, where they're crashing and the beach, that's your breaker zone. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> all right. See, I learned something, learned something new every day. Um, we're going to take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about your transition from the military into Hollywood. Uh-oh. <laughs> 